my name's Kevin V. Hill. Welcome to Chapter 4 of Playing the Guitar with Your Brain. The topic for this installment is left hand shifting with the somatosensory system. As you may recall from Chapter 2, the somatosensory system is located in Brodmann areas 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7, near the central sulcus of Rolando in the parietal lobe. This system includes discriminative or fine touch and proprioception, which is the knowledge of where our limbs are and whether or not they're moving. Several years ago, I was giving a master class and had the honor to meet a blind student. This student was clearly a master of her somatosensory system. She used discriminative touch to read braille music notation and had to memorize everything that she played. I was particularly impressed with her ability to play in various positions along the length of the fingerboard without vision. I wondered how she was able to do this with such accuracy. The ability to play the guitar without looking at the fingerboard would certainly be beneficial for guitarists, whether blind or sighted. Typically, when making a large shift from one position to another, the eyes can be extremely useful. For example, if I were to play an A major arpeggio, I like to set things up so that I can actually see the A at the 10th fret, 2nd string, but I'm going to look at that while I'm still in 2nd position. So I hit my destination target pretty accurately by just looking at that A. Now, to descend the arpeggio, I'm going to look at the C sharp on the second string, second fret. So again, I'm looking in ninth position at the A and the C sharp in second position. So how can I play this same arpeggio without looking at my destination points. Well, let's see what happens if I put on a blindfold. So, using fine touch or discriminative touch, I can locate the nut. I feel its texture. And then, past the nut, this is the first fret. Well, I can feel the fret here, and past that, I'm in the second fret area, or second position. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my arpeggio. But now, how am I gonna find that first destination point, which was the A that was on the 10th fret on the second string? Well, believe it or not, it's actually gonna be pretty easy. All I have to do is touch the side of my hand here with the side of the body. I know that when I'm here, I'm in ninth position. And I know that there's a B here at the 12th fret. A is a whole step lower than that. So here's my A. So again, I feel the nut, I go past the fret, and I'm gonna go ahead and play. I'll feel the side of the, the guitar here, and I'll have the A here. So let me go ahead and try the whole arpeggio. Now, descending, I could come back and touch the nut and then the fret, but I might lose a little bit of the rhythm in that process. Touching the nut. Yeah, I did have a little bit of a gap there. So let's try it again. Let's see if I can do it without touching the nut. Well, I'm able to do that, but I had to use a different strategy, one that we'll talk about here in just a moment. I'll take my blindfold off. So how can we locate specific points along the fingerboard when there's not necessarily going to be a tactile reference like the nut or the side of the guitar? Well, let's think about proprioception and the cerebellum as tools that we can use to navigate the fingerboard. 
As you may recall from chapter 3, the cerebellum is tasked with the maintenance of equilibrium and posture, the correction of ongoing motor movement, and learned skilled motor movements. Posture is the first thing to consider. It is important to have a consistent relationship between the instrument and our bodies. If our position is not consistent, then the choreography of a shift would be extremely difficult. If you've ever watched a concert pianist, you've probably observed that they take plenty of time and care to make sure that their bench is centered at a specific distance from the keyboard. The bench is also at a particular height and they're sitting in a particular location on that seat to orient themselves in relation to the keyboard. If we want to train a learned skilled motor movement, we must position our instrument consistently so that it's always there when we want it to be there when we're moving. As for proprioception, we need to set some kind of reference system so that we'll consistently know specifically where we are. Now I found that when I relax my arm and just swing from the elbow, I'll find myself in seventh position. There I am. I'll do it again. I've also learned that when I swing my arm up here and then put a little bit of resistance right here to the left, I'll find myself in fifth position. And when I open my armpit a bit, then I can actually be to first position here. We've already talked about hitting the side of the guitar, and that would put us at ninth position. And then if I want tenth position, all I have to do is slightly angle my fingers in this direction. Between each of these references, I can gauge my motion to find other positions along the fingerboard. Now, let's put this to the test. I've chosen Adelita by Francisco Tarraga to demonstrate shifting without the use of vision. Adelita begins with the E that's at the 12th fret on the first string. Well, that's easy enough. I'm just going to hit the side of the guitar here, and here's my E. So I have two notes here before I have to shift. So I'm in ninth position now. I need to shift to seventh position for this B. Well, how do I do that? Well, there are a couple things I can do. I can be in touch with what it feels like to be in seventh position, and I can also feel the frets going underneath my finger as I slide two frets. Here we go. One, two, and I'm in position for the B. So as I continue, sorry. Now I have to go back to to ninth position. So again, I'm going to hit the side of the guitar. But now for the cadence, I have to be in fourth position. How am I going to get there? Well, I could feel what it's like to be in fifth position and try to add another fret. That's a possibility. Or I can also feel the frets underneath my third finger. I know that I need to go three frets downward. So here's one fret, two frets, three, and here's my chord. So I'm going to play that whole little section now. Now, the A section finishes in fourth position. That's where I'm at right now. 
It just so happens that the B section starts in fourth position. So it's easy enough for me to continue. But now I have to shift all the way back to ninth position. You guessed it. I'm going to use my fourth finger. I'm going to hit the side of the guitar and I'm in position and I can play this. But now I have to go to seventh position. Well, I can feel the frets underneath my finger, one, two, and I'm in seventh position. Now I need to go to first position for a G sharp. Well, open the armpit. Here's my G sharp. But now I have to hit the G sharp that's an octave higher. And that G sharp is going to be the 13th fret on the third string. Well, I can hit the side of the guitar. That's where the G is. Put a little bit of an angle to my hand and I'll be at G sharp. There's the G sharp. So again, then I need to go back to seventh position for a D sharp. Now, how did I do that? Well, I can think about what it feels like to be in seventh position as I did earlier. But another thing that I have is that I've had enough experience to kind of get a sense of the musical distance from one point to another. Now I'm going to continue. I have to go to eighth position and then back to seventh. And really all of these shifts that I'm going to do for the rest of the section are either going to be one or two fret shifts. So I can feel the frets underneath my fingertips. So I need a two fret shift, one fret, two frets, and finally first position. So I'm going to play that section. So as you can imagine by now, the use of our somatosensory system can substantially enhance our abilities to shift along the fingerboard. If you're a sighted person, I encourage you to continue using sight when necessary. But perhaps you don't need to look at everything all the time. Sometimes looking at the fingerboard is like looking at railroad tracks and can create confusion. I encourage you to use your somatosensory system with its abilities of proprioception and fine touch to enhance your abilities. Thanks for watching and happy practicing.